Well, this is the devotional for Monday, May the 24th. Our scripture reading for today is Joshua chapter 2 and 3. And I've titled this devotional, Bold Faith, Wet Feet. Now, Joshua chapter 2, I'm going to give the subtitle, Two Spies and a Harlot. A little bit of the background. Now, with the affirmation and enlistment of the tribes that would settle on the east side of the Jordan River, Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua sent spies to survey the city of Jericho on the other side of the Jordan. Now, the city of Jericho, uh, like Egypt in the scriptures, is uh, pictured as a type of the world. It was a place of wealth and commerce and idolatry and all manner of wickedness, including harlotry. And the city was also an obstacle to Israel invading the land. You see, Joshua knew that the city of Jericho must be destroyed before the nation and its armies could pass further into the land of Canaan. And so now these spies arrived in Jericho, and providentially they entered an inn located on the walls of the city, and one identified as, and I quote, a harlot's house named Rahab. Now, why the house of a harlot? Well, there are many reasons I might suggest, but the one most important is the Lord knew Rahab's heart was moved to faith by all that she had heard about Israel and their God. Rahab hid the spies at the risk of her own life and lied when the king's men came seeking them. Some might argue the more grounds for her lies, but you and I must remember she was ignorant of God's law and commandments, and her conscience probably was unstirred by her sin. Rahab professed her faith in the Lord when she appealed to the spies that she and her family be spared the destruction of Jericho, as she believed was certain. Now consider the faith of Rahab as we find it in Deuteronomy 2 and verses 9 through 12. Rahab said unto the spies, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. In verse 10, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, though that was forty years earlier when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites. And she goes on and says in verse 11, As soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. The spies gave Rahab a sign, a token of her faith, and instructed her, Bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And the spies returned to Israel's encampment, and they assured Joshua, uh, jo uh, Joshua 2 in verse 24, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Now Joshua chapter 3, the subtitle there is Stepping Out by Faith and Into the Jordan. Uh, Joshua wasted no time to muster the people to trust the Lord, and he commanded the nation to relocate to the shores of the Jordan whose waters they must cross to enter the promised land. Now for three days, an estimated two million people stood looking at the floodwaters of the Jordan and no doubt there were many questioning among them, what now? And Joshua then commanded the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord before the people, and he warned them to stand at a distance from which they, that, that the Ark would represent the Lord's throne and his presence in the midst of Israel. One senses the joy and the anticipation of Joshua as he tells the people in Joshua 3 and verse 5, Sanctify yourselves, set yourselves apart, make yourselves holy, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Well, for 40 years, this people, this generation, the ones that had been born in the trial, trials of the travels of the wilderness, the people had heard how the Lord had opened the Red Sea for Israel to pass through on dry ground. The Lord now promised he would magnify Joshua's name, saying, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Thou shalt command the priests that they bear the Ark of the Covenant, and say it, When you are come to the brink of the shore of the water, ye shall stand still in the waters, if you would, of the Jordan River. 
Well, the dividing of the waters of the Jordan would assure the people that the living God is among you and that he would drive the heathen nations from the land. And bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the priests stepped into the waters. And as they did, the waters divided and the people passed over against Jericho. We read in Joshua 3, verse 17, that the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground unto all the people were passed clean over Jordan. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's presence and God's power. Now it served as a testimony that the Lord would go before his people and Israel passed through the dry bed of the Jordan, confident the Lord who had parted the waters was with them. I leave with a quote of a great gospel song Faith is the victory. Whatever trials, whatever troubles you're facing, if you will obey the Lord and commit yourself to Him by faith, you can trust the Lord will bless you. Faith is indeed the victory. It was true for Israel. It can be true in our life as well. God bless. I look forward to joining you tomorrow as we continue our sojourn through the book of Joshua. Bye-bye. Have a great day.